everyone, and welcome back to The Geek Wave. This is the low-budget show. It's the show so low it has no budget. We're back at it. We took a week off because the Ang Lee Hulk video was more consuming than I expected. And I just wasn't vibing with it the other week. You know, doing a show weekly is hard sometimes, especially when there's like nothing you really want to talk about. And especially now since we're in the midst of a writer's strike. And because of that, I genuinely don't really want to talk about the news because I don't want this just to become... So this show and that movie are postponed and they're not working on it anymore or like the top creatives aren't doing that anymore because that's going to be depressing and terrifying, but I stand with the WGA all the way, so just know that. I've talked about that a couple weeks ago. Fair pay is important and it is earned and deserved for these people. They need a living wage. They should get one. And we shouldn't have the fear of a looming artificial intelligence taking over are creative industries. That being said, there's a couple pieces of news we could talk about. Nothing major, just stuff that I guess is kind of like announced after the strike that could potentially not be affected by it. Some of it I think will be. There's a couple pieces where I'm like, that's, yeah, who knows? It's all up in the air. Genuinely though, None of this news particularly excites me. When we talk about Superman casting, because I thought I could do a whole video talking about that, I decided not to. I think instead we'll just look at like what the rumors were and what we're seeing. That is the only thing where I'm like, oh, actual good choices being presented. That's kind of cool. But before we get there, we have a couple pieces of news, which is pretty much just more things I don't like are happening. Let's talk about them. For instance, we talked about this a couple weeks ago, the speculation that Tim Burton would be developing, directing, and creating the sequel to Beetlejuice. It is fi- it, it's confirmed. September 2024 is the targeted release date. He's already casting. Keaton is potentially back. I think that was one of the names they said. Jenna Ortega will be playing Lydia's daughter. That's great. I'm so glad she is. I mean... I don't know what she wants to do with her career. I get that. You know, some actors are like, well, you find your niche in like the horror genre or in like this gothic genre. You don't really want to branch out from that. I feel like if we let her do something in a different genre, I might be more impressed with what she's doing. But it feels like she's going to be trapped in like, oh, we're only doing these things now. Like Scream and well, she was an ex and then Wednesday. It's like, we get it. Don't. You're too young to get sucked into the Tim Burton hate machine. Like, don't become one of his mainstays. You are way too interesting to have that happen to you. Please don't let that happen. Again, I feel like I don't have to worry about Jenna Ortega. Like, she seems confident enough and capable enough to know where she wants to go. But you hear some of her thoughts on Wednesday, the show. It is kind of interesting. She wants to work again with Burton. I wonder if it's more like a contract thing where it's like, well, I need the money if I do this. Maybe I can get something else done. Who's to say? It's like the reverse of what happened with Sydney Sweeney for a lesser extent where she worked with Sam Levinson on Euphoria and then she got out of there, had her own production company startup, is working on her own projects. They're all very interesting projects too. I feel like Ortega is just still kind of trapped in like the nostalgia bubble that's going to be her career for a while. On top of that, we had Willem Dafoe potentially joining the ranks of Beetlejuice. Works for me. I mean, he's arguably more interesting than Michael Keaton at this point, but that's a whole other conversation. And of course, drumroll please everybody, joining the cast of Tim Burton's Beetlejuice 2 is none other than Monica Belushi, his girlfriend. I don't know why that shocks me so much. Burton has found a way to get a lot of pretty ladies to talk to him. I'm just like, dude, you are so transparent and I don't care. Like, I'm sure she's going to be fine. So that's great. I'm just like, yeah, that's on the nose, dude. Thanks for doing that. So look forward to a couple years from now, not even like a year and a half from now, when we dive back into the world of Beetlejuice And it bombs because no child gives a shit about Beetlejuice. I don't understand. This is the problem that I have with every single piece of nostalgia that we're still trying to pump out into things. There isn't the audience you're thinking of for it. I don't know young people that care about Beetlejuice, you know? 
it's weird. And it's not like it's going to be Rob Zombie's monsters where it's clearly aimed for himself and the people that like him. This is supposed to be like a big fledged thing for everybody. But how could you do that? Is that what Ortega's here for? She's not going to sell that. I don't understand it. I don't understand it, but whatever. We'll cross that bridge when it comes. It's all It all sucks. Everything sucks. Hollywood is broken. Pay your writers to make original content or we're going to be trapped in this whatever the fuck forever. Stepping away from this, I guess, sequel? Sequel? We're moving to another sequel because it was announced the other day that... Oscar-winning actress Jamie Lee Curtis will be teaming up with her Freaky Friday co-star, Lindsay Lohan, for a Freaky Friday sequel. How cool is that? Are we excited for a Freaky Friday sequel? Can I ask you that? Is this... I mean, okay. Okay. Let's take a minute. Let's think about that era of this content where it's like, this is cool... It's that Disney afternoon era where everyone's just watching this kind of stuff. That audience grew up. I guess they still like Lindsay Lohan and Jamie Lee. I do. I don't have any problems with those ladies. So it is kind of interesting that Lohan's coming back. Like, I think she even said she's doing like another project somewhere. But I I guess this is what people want to see. It has the vibes to me of the Christmas story, Christmas story thing. Do you remember when the, like, the guy that did, like the kid from the original A Christmas Story made a Christmas story sequel like last year and nobody watched it? Because what is that? We just keep doing this and it all gets forgotten and untalked about. So what are we even doing? I don't know. Uh, this is an interesting choice for Jamie Lee Curtis coming off of her Oscar win. I guess she wants to make that money. Look, she ha- she won. So that's great. She doesn't need to do anything ever again. Like, she's had a storied career decades upon decades in the making. So, whatever. You want to make Freaky Friday? Go for it. I don't really give a shit. It just doesn't seem that interesting. And what do I know? Maybe it is interesting. Maybe it's the smartest decision anybody's ever made. I doubt that, though. But I genuinely don't care. I don't care. Do whatever you want. And another piece of news that's very fascinating, well, fascinating in all the wrong ways. The time that this video is coming out, it will be the week before Fast X hits theaters and destroys cinema forever. And they had the the premiere the other day and all of your favorite stars showed up. And a couple things happened. First off, the big cameo at the end of the movie was revealed. I'm just going to tell you, it's Dwayne Johnson back as Hobbs or Shaw. I haven't seen Hobbs and Shaw, so I don't know which one he is. I'm going to guess he's Hobbs because he doesn't seem like he'd be the second build guy in a thing. Uh, he's back. Will he commit? Who knows? It, it's it, it reeks of, I tried to destroy the DC universe. They didn't like it. I need approval from everybody. So I'm doing Moana and now I'm doing Fast and Furious again. The beef is over, folks. The the long argued beef between Vin Diesel and Dwayne Johnson. Two guys that are just like the staples of what a good, cool person is. You look at those two and everything they've done to the franchise that they've tried to take over or be a part of, and all you can think of is, yes, these are two guys I want to hang out with that seem like normal, rational people and not egotistical maniacs. So that's great. Let's have them on screen again. That's going to be really fun. I don't give a shit about any of this. I, I've talked about this before, I'm pretty sure. My only exposure to the Fast and Furious universe was when I was in college, a buddy of mine just said, we're going to watch all of them. That was before Fate of the Furious came out. So we watched all seven, I think. Maybe we missed like one of them. And I couldn't tell you a single thing that happens in any of those movies apart from that. Ludacris and Tyrese Gibson are in it. That's what I remember. And they steal a safe and Letty is gone for one of them. I don't know. They all sound terrible. So I don't really care about this, but we'll be getting them to the end of time because Vin Diesel's got nothing left in the tank. You know, I, I genuinely think the reason that they're announcing it's going to be like three part finale is because Vin couldn't get a property he wanted to work on made. I feel like that is what's actually happening here, where he wanted to do something and they were like, 
you can't do that. We're not going to let you do that because we don't want you to work on that property. Maybe not. It just, it definitely just has the vibes of there's no end in sight for this guy. And that kind of sucks. But look, if, if you can keep, and here's, here's what I've always said about the Fast and the Furious movies, movies I don't watch or care about in any regard. If you can take all the talent in those movies, like Diesel, Dwayne Johnson, Tyrese Gibson, Michelle Rodriguez, the other people, Statham's in them, I think. If you could keep them all in like the Fast universe, they can work on those forever and then not touch other properties or projects. And I would be okay with that. If we could just keep that family in this one location, they won't be ruining other projects they could be a part of. So I appreciate that. So make them forever. Don't let this family touch other projects or franchises or anything. Clearly it doesn't work because Dwayne Johnson tried to take over DC and it failed. And we shouldn't allow that to happen ever again. So just let them play in the Fast and Furious bubble so they don't touch anything else. I'm fine with that forever. That is fine by me. We do not have to worry about any of that ever again. Cool. So 12 Fast and Furious movies and then a spinoff called Hobbs and Shaw. And then they had like a cartoon. So they made a bunch of them. That's great. I don't want to see any of it. And I will not be covering the movies probably in any capacity for a while at least. Maybe if we're doing like a big finale thing, I'll talk about them if I want to watch them. But I really don't want to spend any more time with Vin Diesel than I have to. He seems like a guy I don't want to talk to or be a part of in any capacity. So let's just forget about it. Okay, there you go. Three movies for a finale. Dwayne Johnson's back. Movies are real. Let's all wait for Mission Impossible. <laughs> let's take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about the rumored casting for the Superman Legacy film. So it looks like Superman Legacy had enough of a script finish where they can actually start like giving it out to agencies and have people audition and send in reels and stuff for the roles of characters, which is kind of cool. I mean, I'm still nervous about where we are in terms of everything in Hollywood but to know that even though we're in the midst of a strike there is still the potential that a good Superman movie could be done in 2025 that's really nice and there was a huge exclusive that came out from the Hollywood Reporter I, I believe it could have been picked up by a bunch of like other sites and talked about all over but I'm on the Hollywood Reporter website looking at this list and it definitely sees like it's their exclusive. So we're going to go through some of the castings that they're talking about, like people who are front runners and all this kind of stuff, because I think it's interesting. You know, if this was just, let's talk about the Dark Hawk series and who's up for the role. I don't think that's interesting, but we're talking about the most iconic character, maybe in popular culture of all time. So it is worth mentioning like what we could see happening from this character, what we want to see happen from this character. So we know James Gunn is the writer and director of this project, and he's been kind of talking about like, hey, maybe some people from Guardians are going to show up. Maybe my friends and family are going to show up. Without a doubt, that is probably going to happen. I could definitely see Sean Gunn playing like a, like a, like a robot or something, just like some mindless creature to fight, maybe like a atomic skull that could be interesting but there is a couple of pieces here that are worth mentioning so the first big announcement was like hey this is like the the front runner for the role of superman is david corn sweat and he of course is or corn sweat corn sweet corens corn sweat corn sweat I don't know. He was that like projectionist that was in uh, Pearl, which is one of my favorite movies from last year. And I, I do like this choice. I have seen some words that could be from him talking about Superman, like when he was younger. Like, hey, I think that'd be a fun role to do. It seems like he is interested in it. I have a couple of hesitations with like the announcement that it's gonna that David could be the character if it was him. I don't think that's wrong at all. He seems like the perfect choice. The one thing I do note is that he has the same facial structure as Henry Cavill. Like, it's the same kind of chin and nose and build. And that's just a little too, like, yeah, we're just doing, like, a younger version of Cavill's thing. And that 
doesn't sit well with me. I'd like it to look a little bit different. He doesn't have like the leanest or broadest build either, which is something I consider like what Superman needs. I've always said like he needs to look like he works on a farm like a big boy. Broad shoulders. Look, he is a handsome piece of meat. I will give him that. If he's going to bulk up, I could see it. If it's a younger Clark too, sure. He looks the part. But if you just put photo of him next to Cavill, there are a lot of similarities. He does have the hair. He does have the eyes. I could see it and I would be fine with it. I would like to see him bulkier though. I feel like he would bulk up for this. Seems like a nice guy. Nothing wrong with that choice. Kind of a nerdy little dude. So that's interesting. I do think his Clark Kent would be way more interesting than what his Superman could be. So that's really appealing. He's an interesting looking man. Very fun. I do think it's going to be him. Like part of me does believe like, oh, it's probably going to be this guy. I could definitely see that being the case. So they also were looking at Jacob Elordi, who of course is from Euphoria. He apparently didn't want it. So it's probably not going to be him. And there was a couple British actors like Tom Brittany and Andrew Richardson who are also in the early mix. I don't know much about those people, but I imagine they're fine. You know, I'm sure they're a good choice for that. I could see that happening. So be on top of all that, we do have a couple other pieces of announcement. Like um, there was like this thing that, hey, Nicholas Holt audition it's possible that he was like looking for the role of both Clark Kent or Lex Luthor which I do think his Luthor would be a little more slimy and grimy so I think that's a better fit for him not saying that this guy couldn't bulk up for Superman but he does have a little bit more of like the creepy dude vibe which is exactly what you want from Lex Luthor so I could see that I I mean sure if he's up for Superman I could see that I'm fine with that and that's kind of fun, kind of cool stuff. So that, okay, so if it's David for Clark, Nicholas Holt for Lex, sounds like a good pairing. And, and that's all fine and dandy. And I like hearing those announcements. I like seeing what those are going to be. Here's what excites me the most, because I'm always being a fan of Lois Lane. She is my favorite character in the DC universe. I love her very much. I like a lot of these potential announcements they made. So the huge like top contender sounds like it's Emma McKay, Emma Mackey, Emma Mackey, Emma, Emma McKay, you know, from Sex Education, who had that Emma movie come out or Emily. Yeah, she did the Emily Brunty movie recently. Perfect choice. I could definitely see that. That is the type of role I could see her committing to. And it's not hard and it gives you a lot to do. And I appreciate that. I think she would be a really phenomenal choice. We also have Phoebe Dynever, who was in Bridgerton. Of all four of these like potential Loises, she's the one that I'm just like, eh, I don't really need to see that. That's not the one that excites me. I'm not saying she couldn't do it. I'm sure she could. Samara Weaving is also another name being thrown around there. I, I don't love it. I think she is probably going to find a another like IP to call her own for a minute I don't think it's going to be the Superman world that being said I think she's talented I think she'd be great but the one that interests me the most because I'm a fan of her biggest show Rachel Brosnahan is up for Lois Lane which is very fascinating because that could go either way if she is given the chance to play Lois Lane, that could either be look at her stepping out to doing something unique and different and creative, or it could be like a redux of her doing her Miriam Maisel thing, which is just like this high concept, snarky woman capable of all that. I do think the Maisel thing could work for Lois, but I also think you should modernize it up a little bit and try something a little more sarcastic as opposed to just quippy. We'll see, though. Like, apparently she delivered an outstanding audition, but because she's 32 years old, she might be too old for the role. What are you talking about? The David Corn Sweat is 29. If it's him and she's three years older than him, heavens, right? How bad could that be? It sounds terrible. I couldn't even imagine a woman being three years older than the male lead of a franchise insanity but if the cast turns out to be David Cornsweat, Nicholas Holt, 
or Emma Mackey and Rachel Brosnahan. Like if it's a, if it's a combination of those two and all that, I think uh, it could be pretty cool. I'm just looking essential reads that popped up for Hollywood Reporter. It says this was today. This was published not even that long ago. Rachel Brosnahan talks being on the shortlist to play Lois Lane in Superman Legacy. It would be extraordinary. Okay, what does she have to say? Do we have a quote from her? I mean, look, take everything you read on the internet with a grain of salt as my first piece of advice. Look, it would be extraordinary. I grew up watching Lois Lane, this incredibly talented journalist. Far from a damsel in distress, I would jump at the chance if it arose. That sounds to me like she talked about the role. I don't know about you guys. I don't know about you guys. That does sound to me like she she did audition hard. Where she's like, "Hey, hey, that wasn't supposed to come out yet. Don't worry, it's okay." I I'm almost certain that's the case. Perfect, perfect. She would. I I still think she would be perfect for that role. She is still my top choice. Yes, she's older than David, but come on, she was doing Maisel when she was like 26. Are you telling me she couldn't hold her own and look younger? I don't know. So my choice is probably bras to hand, but I I wouldn't be surprised if they went another direction. I hope it's her. I love her. I want her to do more stuff. Let's take a quick break again, and when we come back, let's talk about another topic that's very interesting to me right now, the Muppets. So I've already done my review talking about the Muppets Mayhem. It is the latest outing from Muppet Studio, straight to Disney+. All episodes dropped at once which I'm not a big fan of. I would have liked if they spaced it out a little bit. You know, get the get the population talking about Muppets again. It was trending on Twitter when it came out for that week. But let's do it again. Come on, let's talk about it forever and never stop talking about it. I feel like they're afraid to, or maybe they're just not allowed to be the biggest show in the world, which kind of sucks. I just wish they were because they're so cool. And I like, I really, really like the Muppets Mayhem. It's the kind of thing I've wanted from the Muppets for a long time. Now, to talk about that briefly, I did do a review on it, but it doesn't matter. If you're just watching this, you probably haven't seen the review. It doesn't matter. Modern Muppets is very interesting. They have attempted to be very in the moment in a lot of aspects. So if we start back with the, I, I, I think if we look back at like, 2012's The Muppet Movie. It's like, we're rebranding, we're starting to do our huge push with Disney, they're making us one of their properties again. Okay, we're introducing a new character, we're back in the world, we're gonna do a sequel that's a straight-up comedy, it's all funny, we're having fun, it's a great idea, we're enjoying ourselves, it's a good show, it's a good concept, it does fine, people like it. 2015, ABC's like, how about like an office style show about the Muppets personally that's one of my favorite Muppet shows in a long time or one of my favorite Muppet contents in a long time is the 13 episode series they did in 2015 I thought it was great because it's that thing that works so well when a show understands its audience the Muppets at that point in time were primarily aimed for an older audience. So if we want to get people talking about it, we're going to break up Kermit and Miss Piggy. He's going to have a new pig girlfriend. It's going to be a little more sexual, like behind the scenes and funny and that kind of stuff. And it pulled it off okay. I personally like the show a lot. I think the stuff it was trying to do didn't work 100% of the time, but I still think there's a lot of stuff to like in there. They were kind of just like doing sp- whatever for a while guesting on abc shows and that kind of thing not kermit was on the mass singer you remember that and then disney plus happens and it's like oh we have a new revenue stream where we can make muppets content and the thing is you have the muppets it is your star wars it is your marvel it is your national geographic you should always be attempting to put a new muppet project out there if we can get three Disney Plus original series based on the MCU, you should at least be getting two Muppet series a year or every one every year because we should be trying that. We should be doing that. So the first thing that happened with the Muppets on Disney Plus was Muppets Now, which was not a show I liked. It was only a couple episodes long. 
And essentially, it was just, what if we did, like, webcam stuff? What if we did, like, here's Beaker and Bunsen, and they're going to just, like, do an experiment for a minute. We're going to do, like, a Hot Ones interview kind of thing. It was trying too hard to be for the times today, and that didn't work. It didn't have any staying power. It's a forgotten piece of Muppet iconography, and that's probably good. We don't have to think about it because it wasn't that interesting. Last year, they did the Muppets Haunted Mansion special, which I wasn't that big of a fan of. I think there's something about that premise that could work when we see that Gonzo and was it Pepe have to stay in the Haunted Mansion for a night. That's a cool idea. There's something to explore there. It just didn't work perfectly. I think the cameos were too egregious and didn't like fit the tone of what the show should have been. But that's okay. It happens. And then now we have the Muppets Mayhem, which is one of the best pizza Muppets content in a long time. Every single character acts in character. It is both mature and silly at the same time. The jokes all land. The characters all land. The cameos all land. It feels like they figured out that thing that they have been missing for a while and they made it work, which is exactly what I've been wanting for a long time from this show. If we're just going to do a piece of content about the electric mayhem, you just make it focused on the music. It's in the music industry. They are relics of the time, but still so modern they can influence everybody. The jokes all land. The way that the Mayhem show plays with the concept of like a modern idea of music and band work and what it means to like promote stuff is exactly the type of like trending viral thing that you should be focusing on to make it for today. It does that perfectly as opposed to other stuff they've worked on. But I really appreciate what this show was doing and attempting to do. And it just got me thinking like, can we try that for other things in the Muppet universe? Do you think it's possible for that to happen again? Can we take that idea that the Muppets Mayhem did? We're focusing on the band. It does seem it's the easiest to do for the band because there are six characters. There's an already established world built for them. I think that would be very interesting. Now, I was thinking about a couple of things they could do. I have a couple of suggestions for what we could attempt to try and things that are both modern of the time and make these characters wholly relevant for today. So we're going to break this into two categories. It's going to be Muppets referencing something or a story about a specific character or niche within the Muppets universe that could be something to explore. So let's start with this. If the Muppets are coming back in a big way, how would you promote a new show for them? What would you do? What would you parody? What would you spoof? Let's say you have 10 episodes to make a Muppet show based on a pre-existing concept. What would you try to attempt? I think we should really focus in on what a modern audience would want to see. So I don't want to do like, hey, we're doing like a Back to the Future riff or anything. No, we're going to reference things that people like today, the things people are interested in. The easiest one, in my opinion, that I think we could see potentially happen in some aspect is like a Knives Out mystery where we have like one human character solving a Muppet murder or like something happening to a Muppet. You know, I know that's been talked about before. People have mentioned that it's like, what if we just put the Muppets with Benoit Blanc? What would come up of that? But there's actually something to say there. It's funny. It could be a unique idea that lets these characters grow and have fun. So I do like that idea. I think there's a potential. There is potential that we could see something like that arise. You know, that kind of a concept. I do. I do think it is going to happen in some capacity. And, you know, the another easy one, I think, is doing, like, a parody of the MCU. But the thing I would do differently is, like, you have it about, like, you have your central character. And then, like, the adjoining Muppets are trying to, like, build their own superhero to make it into a franchise. So you have, like, Kermit is maybe playing a, an Iron Man or Captain America type. And then Gonzo shows up. He's like, hey, I thought we were doing my origin story. This isn't where I'm supposed to be right now or that like that kind of vibe where they're just like, hey, we should be building up the big bad right now. And you have like the one human character come in to be the big bad. And then they like usher them off of like the screen like, OK, see you in a couple more movies like that kind of vibe. That's what they should be working on, too. 
because it's funny and it's a great concept and people like that. I do think that is going to happen in some capacity. You know, like like it's one of those things where it's owned by Disney. If they wanted to do it, you could get somebody like Brie Larson to show up. You could get somebody like Don Cheadle to show up and just pretend for a minute. I could definitely see that being the case. I could also see like them doing like one of like the big movies, you know, like an Avatar The Way of Water or what What am I thinking of? Top Gun Maverick, like one of those big movies, Mission Mup Possible or something. I think those are all possibilities for what we could see happening with the future of the Muppets name. I do think those are all possibilities. Those are the big ones, in my opinion. Now, what I kind of want to focus on is like, what if we did another Electric Mayhem? How would we go about it? What should we do for another like Electric Mayhem show? Is it possible to do that? Is there a way to accomplish that? I don't know. I think there is. Again, the easiest way to do it was the Electric Mayhem or the Muppets Mayhem. Like, here's the musical characters. They did it right. What do we do now? There are a couple obvious standouts to me for what you could do. Another easy one to adapt is, like, putting Fozzie, like, on tour, having him do, like, a stand-up bit where he goes around doing his stand-up. You have other comedians show up who are stand-up professionals. Maybe he hosts a podcast and you could have other characters guest on his podcast that are famous podcast comedians. That's all possible. Would it be hilarious to see Fozzie Bear do a Joe Rogan experience? <laughs> I think it would. If you just have him do that, like a road tour. The thing with the mayhem is like they never record an album. Well, maybe Fozzie is trying to get his groove back to get like on a show where he's trying to like book a late night show and he has to do like his set in order to get on there. That's a thing you could do. I think it's the second easiest one to do aside from that. I would also, this is so great. I, I I just thought of this. I was just looking at a picture of a lot of the Muppets and I just thought of like, what if you took the concept of tar and you gave it to Rolf the dog? <laughs> like that concept where he's like a music teacher on the piano and he starts talking like, hey, have you been tickling the ivories as long as me? This is how you do certain things. And it's just like a downward spiral of him like accidentally falling out of favor with people and making them mad. And then suddenly he's just like at the bottom of this thing. He's like, hey, I'm just glad to be playing the piano. Rolf the dog is my favorite Muppet. I just think modern Muppet stuff doesn't use him enough. So if we could push him in a bigger way, give him something to do like a solo act, maybe like a whiplash or something. Give him something to do. Give Rolf the dog something to do. Why aren't we using him more? I think we should. I think we should. I think... <laughs> I also think if you wanted to do something with Bunsen and Beaker, there is something to explore there too. Get those characters into like a scientific thing. Maybe it's like we're on a mission for the Nobel Prize and it's like a competing science experiment to see who's going to beat us to what thing. Maybe we actually like do something impressive like maybe Bunsen actually like solves a problem in the world and now he's just like called upon to be like one of the smartest men alive and it was actually Beaker that created the thing that solved it and just spiraling out of control from that that's a possibility I just want to see like those kind of solo acts because there is something to explore in those solo acts we can have fun with them you could do the same type of story about, like, the band reuniting 50 years later with Gonzo trying to create his show again. Like, how does he, a man who is, like, a stuntman performer, get jobs or get story or get booked in any capacity in today's times when nobody wants to hire, like, that type of comedy or that type of act? That is an area to explore. There is something there to look into. I like that. I mean... A Kermit solo story seems a little too on the nose, if you know what I mean. Like, there's so many things you could do with Kermit that is just more like, do we want to see Kermit himself leading a project, or do we want to see him being a cowboy, being a space space guy, like that kind of vibe? It could go either way with Kermit. I think people would rather see him just, like, dress up as a character and, and do, like, a comedy of something. That's what I think a lot of people want to see. 
would I like to see like a like you know it'd be good because like even like the Muppets Mayhem parodied like the like Beatles Get Back it would be very interesting to see if they like attempted like a behind the scenes documentary thing that she's taken so seriously like making a murderer or like Tiger King or one of those types of shows where it's like something dangerous has happened and Kermit's here to tell you it's okay. That would be very interesting too. It's it's I get kind of like the knives out thing, but more like look at how insane these people are. Something dangerous is happening. Personally, I would love to see Miss Piggy do like a blonde you know, where it's like, this is her Marilyn Monroe story. And it's just like so on the nose and silly and nobody's really taking it seriously. And she's getting mad at everybody because she's just trying to be a serious actor and have like a serious biopic made about her. Oh my goodness, a Miss Piggy biopic would be so funny. It's just like a fake story of like how she like came into the world. It's all like cliche stuff that doesn't actually have any impact. That would be so funny to see. Uh, the Swedish chef, hell, just give him a reality show, you know, like have him as like a cook somewhere. That's a possibility to do for him. And since we're on the subject, why not talk about some of the other puppets? I know we got something going on at Fraggles right now. You know, they got their show on Apple. But maybe we could find a way to make the Fraggles into uh no, it doesn't work. You see, I'm trying to be like, could the Fraggles or Sesame Street or the Dark Crystal or any of those other creations have the impact and do like these parody things it kind of only works for the muppets they're like the only branch of the henson stuff that really feels like they could just exist anywhere and that's kind of cool so i just kind of think that would be kind of fun to see we could experiment with that try something with that there's just so many easy like obvious things that could do like a star wars one again that's a little on the nose a james bond thing with sam the eagle would be kind of fun Oh, Five Nights at Freddy's with Sweetums, but everyone thinks he's an animatronic, but he's like, no, I'm alive. I'm just locked in here. <laughs> that could be fun. Just give me more Muppet stuff, I guess, is all this video turned into, because I, I do want to see them do like the public domain things, like the the three Muppet tiers would be kind of fun. You could have Gonzo, Fozzie, and Kermit do like the, the Musketeers, and you could have Walter be D'Artagnan or something. Or you could just do more behind the scenes stuff. I don't know. Like there's so many ideas to play with. They should take some chances again. It feels like we're headed down the route where we're going to see that happen. And I'm excited about it. I'm excited for that content. The Christmas Carol, Treasure Island were good. You know, the the Great Muppet Caper, not my favorite, but I do like it. Let's try those again. I, I, it feels like we're heading in that direction. It just feels like that has to be like 10 episodes streaming television now. But it worked. The mayhem proved it can work. So why not give Fozzie his show? Give Gonzo his show? Give Rolf his tar, you know? Those are things we could try. We should do it, you know? Miss Piggy's got some Marilyn Monroe in her. Let's try to make a blonde movie out of that. It's possible. I think we should do it. I am here for that concept, and I want to see it happen. So please, watch Muppets Mayhem. It's a very strong, a very fun show. And tell me, what do you want to see happen with the Muppets now? Is there like a certain direction you want to see them go? They tried doing like the TikTok, Vine, YouTube thing. It wasn't that interesting. But if we go another route with them, I think you got something special on your hands. Something that is wholly different and wholly unique to the Muppets themselves, which is exactly the kind of thing you want to see in today's climate for these characters them being themselves while adapting to the climate and i think we're going to get there i do think we're headed that direction just give me some good content with the muppets please and i think we'll all be happier for it so that is going to do it for this week's episode it's a little bit shorter again but that's just what we got because i don't want to talk about all the crappy news going on in this stuff and i just want you to watch the muppets so thank you all for watching this video be sure to like and subscribe to the channel as always you can check me out on instagram tiktok and twitter and as always i will catch you in the next one have fun stay safe good luck